Hey there Nocturnes! Welcome back sa isa na namang episode ng English Me dito sa Nocturnal Sage, A Guide for Those Left in the Dark. Ako nga pala ulit si Kuya N, ang inyong class president. Noong nakaraang meeting with Sir Jeremy, pinag-usapan natin ang different patterns of paragraph development. Pag sinabi natin patterns of paragraph development, tayo ay nagpo-focus sa kung papaano pinapalago, ine-elaborate, ang grupo ng mga ideas, mas lalo na sa isang paragraph. Natutunan natin na meron tayong deductive, inductive, hinted patterns, at iba pa. For a full list, check out the previous episode. Panoorin mo ulit kung may mga hindi ka naitindihan, at kung na-skip ka sa episode na to, eh balikan mo na lang yung mga sinuorang episodes para makarelate ka naman sa pag-uusapan natin sa episode na to at sa mga, sa, sa mga susunod pa. Ngayon, tayo ay tutungo sa part 2 ng Kinds of Paragraphs. Sa part 2, kung sa patterns ay nag-focus tayo sa kung papaano mag-develop ang ideas, ngayon naman mag-focus tayo sa kung ano ang ginagawa ng bawat paragraph sa text na ating binabasa. So kung limang paragraphs yan na essay, ano kaya yung ginagawa ng nasa huli na paragraph. Anong ginagawa ng una o yung nasa gitna? Yun ang alamin natin sa gabing ito. Kaya samahan nyo na ako sa susunod nating klase with Sir Jeremy. Oh English me So for tonight, we shall deal with the functions of paragraphs. What paragraphs actually do in a particular text. Here, we will discover that some paragraphs are designed to introduce the main idea of the entire composition, while others are designed to act like a bridge between other existing paragraphs and other kinds are meant to provide a, a powerful finish for the entire text. So let's have the first function of paragraph. I hope you don't get lost because here we deal with the role of the paragraph itself. While in the previous topic on patterns, we focused on how ideas in a paragraph are developed. Okay, in different ways, that is. Let's start with the first kind, the independent paragraph. Just by the real sense of the word, when we say independent, you don't need another person, another entity to make you happy, to be complete. Here, just one paragraph, just that one paragraph is enough to be considered a valid composition itself. It doesn't need other paragraphs for it to be complete. Just by reading that paragraph alone, it already sends a complete message. Let's have an example. A reading about, yes, what do you see on the picture? We're going to read something about a particular kind of fish. The sample paragraph that we have is titled The Collapse of the North Atlantic Cod Fishing Industry. So what you saw in the picture a while ago is a codfish. All right. Can you spot the thesis, or rather, the topic sentence, since it's just one paragraph? Where, where is the topic sentence in this paragraph? Can anyone point that out? Okay, the first sentence is the topic sentence. This paragraph is about the several factors, all right, that, that have caused the, um, the decline in the number of codfish and what else did you notice about this paragraph? Yes, it can be also a deductive inductive pattern since we have here the last statement further research is needed to determine exactly what has caused caused the drastic drop in cod fishes, cod catches. In the topic sentence at the beginning, we see here that it's not yet sure whether or not the uh, what really contributed to the drop in the number of codfish but in the last paragraph it somewhat sends that same message of uncertainty further research is needed 
to determine exactly what has caused the drastic drop in cod catches. Because of the deductive inductive pattern, we have more reason to consider this an independent paragraph. The next kind of paragraph is introductory. From the word introductory, it's designed to introduce the main idea of the entire composition. It is also called the first opening starting or beginning paragraph. And we have in the middle the developmental paragraph which acts as a bridge since it's developmental it develops it um, somewhat makes the the idea enter its initial growth stage it starts the development of the thesis we have the transitional paragraph which is like the climax in a certain plot it's the one that connects two or more paragraphs so we usually find the transitional paragraph in the latter middle part of the text. It's usually the third or fourth paragraphs in a five paragraph essay. Now what is the difference between the developmental and transitional paragraphs? Developmental paragraph starts the growth of the idea, the initial growth stage. While the transitional paragraph, it not only sustains that growth, but takes the growth into higher levels okay that's the difference between the developmental and transitional paragraphs and lastly we have the concluding paragraph which sums everything up can restate the thesis statement it is the one that provides a powerful finish to the entire text and usually i don't know with your experience but readers tend to remember more the concluding paragraph if you have a powerful start, you should have a more powerful finish if you want your essay to make an impact in the lives of your readers. Let's see another set of sample texts. This time, it will be about the one that you see on the picture. Who could that be? Okay, let's zero in on the introductory paragraph. 31-year-old Lisa Toth was 16 the night she dreamed of a beautiful evergreen forest where her mother reigned as the evil Snow Queen. At that time in her life, Toth and her mother didn't see eye to eye. And in the dream, Toth's mother attacked her with a tidal wave of snow. Unafraid, Toth used her mind to resist and discovered she had power over all things white. Snow, ice, even salt. And she became the Ice Queen. So now we know that the entire composition is about the Ice Queen. Let's look at the developmental paragraph. Toth woke up feeling strong. I suppose I was processing that my mother was becoming more of a real person to me with flaws and faults and that I was going to go further in life than she had. Toth went on to become the first person in her family to get a university degree. The exhilarating feeling lasted for the day and the details of that dream stayed in Toth's mind still. We see that this is a developmental paragraph because here we discover more of what the dream is all about. The meaning, that is, of why perhaps she dreamt of being the Ice Queen. And then we have the transitional paragraph. On this point, today's dream experts agree with Sigmund Freud and his colleague Carl Jung, both of whom theorized that dreams were the subconscious way of communicating with us. Young especially thought that getting to know our dreams was a way to learn about ourselves. In the developmental paragraph, we see the evidence of that principle. The principle that dreams help us discover more who we are, what we feel, why we feel such things, while the transitional paragraph takes that principle to a higher level. Not only does that principle of dreams apply to Toth, it can also apply to anyone who is capable of dreaming, just like you and me. So see, in the transitional paragraph, it takes the meaning of the a main idea to a higher level, makes it universal. And then the concluding paragraph, the last one here, but the real secret to tapping into the power of your dream is to be open to where they're taking you and not to shirk difficult messages or nightmares. You may not always have sweet dreams, but they're guaranteed to be magical and insightful. Question, 
which paragraph do you remember more? The introductory one or the concluding one? The one at the end. See? We're more inclined to remember what the concluding paragraph is telling us. The power of dreaming. So now that we've learned the different patterns and the different functions, in the next episode, we're going to take a look at how academic texts are arranged. We're going to take into consideration the formats, the common formats that academic texts take. Understanding the structure, the overall structure of any composition is key to understand any academic text that we're asked to read because most academic texts use these formats. So that's part of learning text structure. We've not only encountered what a text is, common parts of a paragraph, we also learned that there are different ways ideas develop and that paragraphs serve different purposes in any kind of text. And if ever you don't find any of those in a text, perhaps the text may not be academic, it may be literary. In this course, again, let us ground ourselves in the thought that, okay, the AAP is about understanding non-fiction academic texts. If you want to read fiction, understand short stories, perhaps you could take a literature course for that purpose. See you in the next episode. Survive the darkness, okay? Oh, English me. Pero hindi alam kung paano Sino ang magtuturo Gusto kong matuto na talaga Oh English me Word of the Night Meritocracy. Now, ang first three na makakapag-comment ng meaning at ng kanyang original sentence, yung hindi plagiarized, ah, bawal yun, okay, ay magkakaroon ng special mention sa susunod na episode. Kaya ano pa hinihintay nyo, doctors? Mag-comment na kayo sa baba bago magsabado, no? Para maisama yung inyong comments sa susunod na shoutout. Kung nagustuhan ninyo ang episode na ito, ilike nyo lang sa baba para naman, no, ma-feel namin na sinusuportahan nyo yung videos namin at saka andoon nyo, iparandam nyo naman din yung inyong pagmamahal sa pag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng mga ganong klaseng pagsuporta. Para naman maingga nyo naman kami ni Sir Jeremy na magpatuloy, no, na payamanin yung channel na to para magkaroon palalo kayo ng resources sa inyong pag-aaral. Mas lala na ngayon ay hirap tayo na makahanap ng libro na magtuturo sa atin ng English at iba pang subjects. Kaya samantalahin nyo naman yung pagkakatong ito, okay? Tapos, kung may mga kakilala kayong senior high na magte-take ng AAP sa susunod na academic year, ngayon darating na July o August, i-share nyo naman din sa kanila para naman eh, makapag-advance study na sila. Para kapag nag-online class na sila, yung panay taas ng kamay o panay unmute para makasagot sa tanong ng teachers. Diba? At least nakatulong uh, kayo sa kanila indirectly sa pag-share lamang ng isang resource. Well, depende na sa inyo yon kung pinagkakatiwalaan nyo ito. Mag-comment din kayo sa baba kung may mga suggestions kayo o may katanungan kayo tungkol sa lesson kung sa tingin ninyo eh, may mga paraan pa para ma-improve yung delivery ng lesson, i-suggest lang sa ibaba. Tapos kung may mga lessons pa kayo tungkol sa AAP na hindi maninaw, na gusto nyong palawakin pa lalo, i-comment nyo lang din sa baba. Ipaalam nyo lang sa amin. Tapos kung viable, practical na maisama siya yung suggestions nyo sa susunod naming episodes, eh gagawin naman din namin yun. Para naman din sa inyo ito eh sa komunidad ng mga nocturnes na gusto mag-aral. Bukod dito, mag-join din kayo. No? Mag-join din kayo sa ating private Facebook group. Ang tawag doon ay The Nocturn Space. Kung may mga uh, topics kayo na nahihiya kayong i-voice out sa baba kasi public, eh, pwede nyo namang i-voice out privately sa ating, yes, haven for the nocturnes. Kaya, 
mag-send lamang kayo ng membership request at i-approve namin. Sa inyo na talagang seryoso kayo sa inyong goals sa pag-aaral. At higit sa lahat, mag-subscribe kayo at i-hit nyo yung notification bell para hindi kayo mahuli sa mga susunod pa naming updates. Ang Nocturno Sage pala no, ay hindi lamang about English for academic and professional purposes. Meron tayong apat na categories. Yung una ay ang self-conquest. Kung gusto mo ng tulong sa pagpoposeso ng negative emotions kagaya ng kalungkutan, depression, hindi kami magsasuggest ng pills na dapat mong i-take. Hindi psychiatry si Sir Jeremy. Okay? Ang pwede lang namin gawin ay magbahagi ng advice na pwede yung gamitin para kung sakali man matulungan kayo sa pagpoproseso ng mga ganong emosyon. Kung wala talaga kayong confident na malapitan. Communication. Bukod sa pagsasalita na English, pwede mong matutuhan kung gusto mo nang um, kung gusto mong maging mahusay, mas mahusay pa sa pagsasalita, susulat, mapa-English man o mapa-Filipino, basta nasa konteksto ng praktikal na komunikasyon, yun, isuggest yun rin yung mga ganong topics. Tapos, leadership. Kung ikaw ay baguhang student council president o student council officer, kung ikaw ay hindi na nag-aaral, nagtatrabaho na, at bago kang promote, let's say, manager o executive, kahit, kahit ano pa pang mga posisyon sa isang kumpanya, basta may kinalaman sa paghahawak ng tao, eh, magtanong ka rin kung, kung kailangan mo ng advice sa uh, kung paano, let's say, mag-manage ng matitigas yung ulo. Kuwari, ganun. At panghuli ay ang expansion. Kung gusto mo lumago sa inyong karera bilang estudyante o profesional, tapos nahihirapan ka makahanap ng motivation para gawin yon hindi mo alam kung saan magsisimula, hindi mo alam kung ano mga skills yung kailangan mong taglayin para makamit yung ganung paglago, eh, ang Akot Nocturne Osage makakatulong din yan sa'yo. Kasi, minsan lang naman mapag-usapan yung career growth, eh. Puro na lang yung pagpapayaman. Yung hanggang doon lang, hindi masyado na pag-uusapan yung paano ka makakakamit ng tunay na yaman. How to produce wealth, yon Yun yung pwede natin pag-usapan. At saka may mga iba pang mga topic siguro na overlapping, na hindi pa hindi ko pa nabanggit. Pero kung gusto nyo yung pag-usapan natin, eh, kaya nga may nocturne space, eh. Safe yon Para ibukang bibig nyo yung dapat yung sabihin. So ako muli, si Kuya N. Kita kits sa susunod na episode ng English Me dito sa Nocturnal Sage, a guide for those left in the dark.